Good morning. This is Jim Morrell from Peninsula Credit Union, and you're listening to Daybreak with Jeff and Dale on News Radio 1030 KMAS. <laughs> Good morning to you. About 10 to 8 here at KMAS. Yes, it is, and we are uh, pleased to be uh, visited in studio with Patricia Grover, who is a coordinator for the Noxious Weed Board for Mason County. That's correct. Did good I get morning. that right? You did. Patricia, yeah, right. good morning. How are you? I am well, thank you. It's cloudy. It's cool. The weeds aren't growing quite as fast today, so I can come in. Yes. Tansy Ragwort. And uh, this is uh, uh, this is their time of year for uh, for Tansy Ragwort. And um, this is a noxious weed. Is this not true? It is a noxious weed. And Tansy Ragwort is on the scene about three weeks early this year. Oh, is it man. the same as Scotch Broom? No. Okay. Scotch Broom was on the scene uh, oh, two months well, ago. Well, it seems like it's perpetual, but... It's same in the fact that it, they're both yellow. They're both yellow, but that's the, where the similarities stop, right? Correct. Okay, all right. Talk to us about Tansy Ragwort. Well, Tansy Ragwort is a biennial plant, which means it takes two years from the time it germinates to the time it produces a seed. Mm -hmm. And it is blooming now. It's bright yellow. There's also some other yellow plants that are blooming along our roadways. It is... Um, Dangerous for livestock owners and hay growers because it does contain an alkaloid that is toxic to livestock. Yeah. So as a result, we really don't want to see it um, adjacent to our pastures. We really would like to not see it in Mason County at all. Sure. But uh, it's here. And so we're encouraging property owners and residents, visitors, anybody to cut it, bag the seed heads, pull the plant, and uh, do whatever you can to just reduce the amount of seed that's produced. We have to physically remove uh, the plant from the area. Uh, you, you're not recommending us spraying anything on it, is that? Um, you, there are people that will spray. Mm -hmm. um, we do some spray applications in various sites. Um, it's a little late to be doing the spraying. That should have been done earlier in the year. So at this point, your best bet is to just uh, cut the seed heads or the flowers off, put those in a bag, send that out with the trash. Um, you can pull the plant parts. Um, problem with tansy is if there's a little bit of root left, that could possibly regrow and you're going to have it right back oh, next so you year. you've got to get, get in there really deep. You can't yeah. mow over it. Um, mowing actually might actually turn it into almost a perennial. So if you mow it and walk away, it'll regrow and probably still flower. Oh, man. Um, I went out into my field the other morning. Morning, it's like, where did you come from? I'm the weed coordinator here. You can't yeah. be a tansy ragwort growing on my property. Yeah. So they just sneak in. So you want to be vigilant. You want to walk your property. And if you're out walking, uh, taking a walk, getting some exercise, take a garbage bag with you and don't hesitate to pull one. So oh, if right. it's been, if it's a biennial, so it, did we see this last year? You saw the basil rosette. Um, there's some botanical terms with this job. And so it's just a, a small leafy base uh -huh. that's uh, kind of purplish. And that's what you would have seen last year. You might not have picked it out unless you were a, a botany type and looking for plant different type leaves. So if we're looking to... the yard whatever you can to get the full root structure out correct now after the summertime uh, or when a proper time to spray if that's the route you want to take is that it's been spring when we have okay. some dry days the okay. temperature is is warmer um and then you're actually just wanting to treat that basil rosette so you're really treating a very small part of the plant at that point is that basil rosette kind of a low, stay close to the ground, flat as it grows out? Yes. Flat, yes. Grows flat to the yeah, ground. Yeah, typically, you know. I think I've seen those. Typically, tansy six inches, twelve inches, and then we see some great big ones sometimes. So, depending on where they're growing, how much water they're getting, how much fertilizer. And it can be just about anywhere. Uh, however, the the spores got up into the air and landed wherever, or are we likely to see it more on roadways or? or what? Like a lot of the noxious weeds, it likes disturbance, it likes sun. So you're going to find it in areas that experience both of those. Roadways okay. are common, um, pastures that are overgrazed, um, along fence lines where they're not being mowed, that oh. kind of um, thing. Um, and they're, that's produced by seed, not by spores. And they're a wind-carried seed. 
So, um, you know, they can kind of find their way a fair distance. And there's thousands of seeds that are produced by every plant. So by deadheading them, you're, you're really reducing the amount of seed that's uh -huh. produced. Uh, just looking at your brochure, and you've got you give us uh, two really nice uh, pieces of uh, some periodicals here. And the the uh, looking at this um, adult ragwort seed fly, can you tell us a little bit about that and how that helps? Um, well, there's a flea beetle. A beetle. Okay. A beetle. All right. That actually um, feeds primarily on the rosettes in the fall, and it's kind of a little golden-colored beetle. It's about the size of a pinhead. It's tiny, tiny, and it'll form. It just basically chews away at the leaves, and so reduces the vigor of the plant. So in the fall, if you see little shot holes in the leaves of your tansy ragwort, that's likely what's feeding on them. Um, some people will say, "Well, how about the cinnabar moth larva, which is a black and kind of reddish color?" orange colored larva uh -huh. they used to release those there's actually a biocontrol program where they release insects to control noxious weeds tansies among them um, they are no longer releasing that but you'll still see those out and about and uh, people send photos and is there a chemical uh, that we can use that would have a uh, a shop name or a commercial name that we'd recognize that would be recommended by the board here. I think that if, if a person has particular concerns, because herbicides are so based on the target, the time, and the place, mm -hmm. um, that it would be best to have a discussion with that um, property owner as to what they're using and, and where they're located. So I don't really want to provide a broad spectrum control okay. method. Okay. <laughs> okay. Patricia, tell us a couple. So Tansy Ragwort is our big issue today. It, it is a issue today. And it is two months earlier than normal. About a month. Okay, about a month. Mm -hmm. Is it because of the dry weather? Is that why? Or I think the dry weather and, and the heat, we're finding that with all of our plants. They just uh, participate in the Master Gardener Garden Tour this yes. um, yeah. weekend. Yeah. And, you know, everybody was lamenting, oh, you know, my garden looks so much different than it would typically look at this time of the year. And the heat and the sun and, and is just making all the plants behave differently. So, yeah. yes. Unusual for all of us, including the plants. Uh, um, the plants, the people, you know, we're all we're all kind of getting used to sort of that Northern California climate that we seem to be experiencing for the last month. So yeah. it's been it's been nice for some of us. But um, for those of us that do weed control, it's really accelerated our season. So are there some other weeds we should be aware of here as we move through the summer months? Actually, there's two that I really would like property owners to be on the lookout for. One is giant hogweed. We just finished up a, a grant funded project controlling giant hogweed in the county. And if there's any left out there, they're a plant with a large white umbrella type flower that grows 10 to 12 feet tall. Oh, wow. And that's the one that has the sap. If you get the sap on your skin exposed to the sun, it can burn. Oh, wow. Actually. And so um, that's when the other one is poison hemlock and both of those are in the carrot family. So they both have a tall white flower and the poison hemlock is blooming now. It's also a two year plant. Uh, we don't know that we have it in any more than about five sites. So for our program, we're a small program, we're a young program, we really work on early detection, rapid response. We just found poison hemlock down um, by the park and ride on the Shelton Matlock Road. Uh -huh. And uh, we got on it and uh, pulled it, bagged it. And so we're hoping that we don't have a recurrence there, that we got it as a first, first occurrence. Uh, quickly, and I know we're bumped up against time here, our pets, are they attracted to any of these noxious weeds and uh, can they be, you know, like fatal to them? Uh, poison hemlock is certainly one that would be fatal. I don't know if your pets would be attracted to it, but a lot of the plants, noxious weeds and other plants, are toxic to animals. So it's the kind of um, field of interest where you should know kind of what your your animals are exposed to and house plants as well, not just noxious weeds. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to be vigilant of what you have in your yard. If something new shows up, find out what it is. The extension office has their uh, master gardener clinic uh -huh. from 12 to three. And you can always send me a photo or bring something in. Great idea. Um, you know, you can't treat, you can't deal with something if you don't know what it is. So right. ID is really important. It <laughs> really truly is. Yeah. That is very important stuff. Uh, Patricia Grover, we're a little out of time. Uh, sorry about that. Cause this is a great topic. Jerry and I were catching up.
Okay. Yes, for sure. Well, we'll get you back in here to talk more about this and more information can be found at the Mason County Noxious Weed Control Board, uh, 427-9670, extension 592. You can also check out mason.wsu.edu. Correct. And we'll get those uh, connections up on our website as well for folks to follow. So, uh, Patricia, thank you for coming in this morning. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll have you back again for All sure. All right, sounds good. What's have one, me. quickly, what's coming up in the fall that we can bring you back in? Anything? Yeah, what's going on with the garden? Not weed. Not weed? Not weed. Okay. We'll All talk right. not weed. We'll talk not weed. We'll do that. Fall. All right. Very All right. good. Thank it's you much. Thank you very much, Patricia Grover, coordinator for the Mason County Noxious Weed Control Board. It's 8 o'clock.